Cambridge practice tests for IELTS 1. Practice test 1. You will hear a couple of different recordings. You'll have to answer questions on what you hear. You'll get time to read the instructions and the questions. And you'll have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test has four parts. Write all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers on the answer sheet. In case you're taking computer-based IELTS, you'll be given two extra minutes to check your answers. Now turn to part one. You will hear a telephone conversation between a woman and a police officer. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. Answer the questions as you listen, as you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 5. You have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. City Police Station, can I help you? Oh, hello. I'd like to report a stolen briefcase, please. Just a minute and I'll put you through. Lost property, can I help you? Oh, yes. I've had my briefcase stolen. Okay, I'll take some details. Tell me what it looks like, first of all. Well, it's a soft leather one, you know, not a heavy box type like a man's. And how does it close? It's got buckles at the front, two of them. They're gold-plated ones. Fine. Uh, was it locked? No, I'm afraid not. Never mind. Any distinguishing features? Pardon? Any marks or badges on it that make it stand out? Uh, only the brand name. And where's that? It's on the back, at the bottom in the left-hand corner. It's saggy. Oh, and there's a scratch. It's quite bad, but small, directly above the brand name. I did it recently, putting it on my bike. I've got that. So, what did you have inside the briefcase? Well, all my papers from college. It's so frustrating, but thank goodness for computers. I haven't lost them completely. Yes, you're lucky. I had my wallet in my pocket, so I didn't lose that. But there were also my pens, which I got for my birthday, and a novel I was planning to read on the train. Right. Where exactly did you lose the briefcase? Well, I couldn't believe it. I was standing on the platform. It was right next to me. You were holding it? I just put it down on the floor, but I could almost feel it beside me. I was watching for my train because sometimes it comes early, and then next time I looked... My briefcase wasn't there. And what time was this? Uh, it was... It must have been about 5.20. No, a bit later. I'd say 5.30 because it was just getting crowded and the train normally comes at about 25 to 6. Now you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Right, if you'll just give me some personal details. Yes. What name is it? I'm Mary Prescott. Can you spell that? Yes, it's 
P R E S C O double T. And your address? Flat two, forty one Fountain Road, Canterbury. Fountain Road. Yes, number forty one. And have you got a contact telephone number? Yes, it's seven five double two, three nine. Seven five double two, three nine. Fine.、Uh, one last question: What would you say the value of your briefcase is, including the contents? Yes, just a rough estimate is fine. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, the briefcase itself is quite new. I bought it last month for forty pounds. I suppose about sixty-five pounds. The contents are worth about twenty or twenty-five pounds at least. That's fine. Well,、um, if you could come down to the station tomorrow, you can sign this form and have a look at what we've got here. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a news report from an Australian radio program. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to thirteen. This is the six o'clock news for Tuesday, the twenty-fifth of November. And first, the headlines: The Prime Minister has promised to help the drought-stricken farmers in the northern part of the country who haven't seen rain for nearly two years. And in Sydney, a group of schoolchildren are successfully rescued from a plane which landed in the sea shortly after takeoff. Transport workers are on strike in Melbourne over a pay claim, and the strike looks set to spread to other states. And on a fashionable note. There's to be a new look for the staff of Qantas, Australia's national airline. Now you have some time to look at questions fourteen to twenty. The Prime Minister has pledged today that he will make $215 million available to help the drought-stricken farmers who have not seen rain for years get through the next five years. Money that was to have been spent on the restructuring of Sydney's road system has been reallocated to what the Prime Minister described as a more worthy cause. Farmers are to receive financial assistance to help see them through the worst drought in over 50 years. Many farmers feel that while the money is welcome, it has come too late to save them and their farms from financial ruin, and are angry that the government did not act sooner. A group of schoolchildren who were travelling in a privately chartered aeroplane from Sydney to Queensland to take part in a musical concert found themselves swimming for the shore when their aeroplane had to land in the sea just three minutes after taking off from Sydney Airport. The pilot managed to bring the aircraft and its 50 passengers down safely in the calm waters of Botany Bay, where boats and pleasure craft were able to come to the rescue of the boys. The fact that it was a weekend meant that there were hundreds of boats in the bay enjoying the good weather, and this undoubtedly helped the rescue operation. We owe our lives to the skill of the pilot, 
said one of the boys, but the pilot replied modestly that it was all part of a day's work. However, all their musical instruments were lost, and they never got to play at the concert. That is the end of part two. You have some time to check your answers. Now turn to part three. Part three. In this part of the test, you'll hear a conversation between a university student and a university lecturer. Now you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Hello. Can I come in? Oh, yes, come in. How can I help you? I was looking for the economics office. I've been all over the arts faculty building looking for it, but I could only find the School of Accounting and Economic History. Is this the right place? Yes, this is the School of Economics. Oh, good. Um, I'm a new student, and I was wondering if someone could give me some information. Well, I might be able to help. A lecture on that program. What do you need to know? Oh, quite a few things, actually. Mm -hmm. Firstly, how many lectures a week do I have to attend? Oh, well, the Economics 1 course is a double unit. So there are two lectures a week and one tutorial. Oh. The lectures are scheduled for Tuesday and Thursday. What time? Oh, let me see. Um, you know, this information is all in the handout, which you should have received yesterday at the orientation meeting. Uh, oh, was there, was there a meeting yesterday? I didn't know about that. Um, no one... Yes, was... <laughs> there was. But uh, never mind. Now, lectures are at four in the afternoon. Oh, uh, four's a bit late. I've got a part-time job that starts at 4.30. Well, you can't be in two places at once, can you? And attendance at lectures is necessary. We expect at least 90% attendance at this university, you know. 90%? That's high. Do they enforce that rule? Yes, we do. We're pretty strict about it, actually. And what times have been set down for the tutorials? Do you have that information? That's a very well-attended course. So there's a number of tutorial times. Um, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, all at nine o'clock. Yours will be allocated at the first lecture. Can't I choose the time? Maybe, maybe not. You'll have to talk to the lecturer on the course. Dr. Roberts is his name. Oh, okay. Now you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Anything else I can help you with while you're here? Well, yes, actually. Do you know what the course requirements are? I mean, uh, how much work is expected for this course? Well, you have to complete a tutorial paper. Well, what does that involve? Well, it's a piece of work on a given topic based on some set reading tests. You'll have to give a small talk to your tutorial group. Oh, how long does that have to be? Oh, about 25 minutes, usually. I have to talk for 25 minutes? Yes, that's right. <laughs> and then you have to write up your piece of work and give it to the lecturer to be marked. Right. Uh, and is that all? No. You also have to complete a 3,000-word essay on a topic. Can I choose the topic? Yes, usually you can. Right. Huh. That shouldn't be too bad. And in addition to that, there is an exam. An exam? <laughs> what sort of exam? Well, it's an open book exam. 
Does that mean I can have the textbook with me during the exam? Yes, that's right. And can you give me any idea about the content of the first year of economics so that I can get into some reading? Well, you'll be getting the reading list next week when lectures start. All the books are in the library. Yes, but won't everyone else take them out as soon as they get the reading list too? Well, yes, they might. But most of the important ones are held in closed reserve. That's a part of the library where you can go to read books, but you can't take them out of the building. What did you call that section of the library? Closed reserve. However, we do recommend that you buy the core books. You'll find them useful, and you'll need them for the exam. Yes, I suppose I will. But what is the focus of the course? Well, the course at this university has a vocational focus. That is, a focus on preparing its graduates for work. So we're orientated very much towards employment. Oh, so my chances of getting a job are good. Well, provided you get good results. Well, look, thanks for your time. You've been really helpful. <laughs> That's fine. See you next week, then. This is the end of part three. Now you have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to part four. Part four. You'll hear a talk given by a university lecturer about the structure of the university. You have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Good morning, and welcome to the University of Westlands. Uh, my name is Marcia Mayhew, and I'm the coordinator of the Bachelor of Social Science degree. Uh, this morning, I'd like to tell you about the structure of the university and about some of the requirements of the degree that you're about to enter. The Bachelor of Social Science is in one faculty within the university. That is the faculty where I work, known as Arts and Social Sciences. Here on this campus, we also have the faculties of Architecture, Law, and Science and Technology, among others. Uh, it's important to know something about the structure of the faculty, because as you go through your course, you may need to call on members of the staff to help you. At the top of the faculty, we have a dean, and below the dean, we have three divisions. Each division has a divisional head, and your degree is located in the Division of Social Sciences. Within each of the divisions, there are the departments, and each of these offers the different degrees. For instance, two of the departments which offer the major subjects for your award are Sociology and Psychology. Each has a departmental head, but for practical purposes, the people you are going to see the most of are myself as coordinator of the social sciences degree and the actual lecturers who are teaching the subjects that you are taking. For instance, in the first semester, you'll be doing four subjects, psychology, sociology, history and economics. If you have any problems or difficulties... Not that I'm anticipating you will, but you never know. <laughs> then you should go and see your lecturers. For instance, you may find that you can't meet a deadline for an essay, 
or perhaps you're having problems with attendance. Uh, these seem to be the two most common problems that students face. If your lecturers are unavailable, you can always come and see me in my office. I'm available on Wednesday and Thursday mornings and on Friday afternoons. Outside these hours, uh, perhaps you could ring the secretary and make an appointment. Now, you'll note that all of the subjects which you undertake in the first year are composed of lectures and tutorials. A lecture is about an hour long and a tutorial usually runs for about two hours. A lecture is rather like what I'm doing now, where one person will talk to all of you together on a subject. Now, we do ask you to try to attend the lectures. <laughs> a tutorial is perhaps where most of the learning occurs at a university. You will be divided into groups of between 12 and 15 students, and each week one of you will have to present a piece of work to the group as a whole, and then the group will discuss what you've said. It's this discussion, this exchange of ideas, which really constitutes the basis of university learning, in my view. Listening to lectures in many ways is just giving you information that you could access for yourself in the library. But the discussion at the tutorial is very important. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't go to the lectures, though. <laughs> Other factors to be particularly concerned about are uh, the structure of essays and delivery of written material. And in particular, I would like to mention the question of plagiarism. Plagiarism is taking other people's work without acknowledging it. That is, without saying where it comes from. Now, of course, all essays are based on research done by other people, but you must remember to attribute the work to the original writer. And while it's a good idea to work with other people, don't hand in work which is exactly the same as your friend's work because we will notice. <laughs> if you don't acknowledge the source of your information, then you run the risk of failing the subject or in very serious cases, you might be denied entry to the university. Last but not least, stay in touch with us. If things are getting you down, don't go and hide. Come and talk to us about it. That's what we're here for. Right. Um, thank you very much for coming along today. This is the end of part four. Now you have half a minute to check your answers.